I guess we'll go ahead and get started. I want to thank all of you guys uh, for coming out. This is arguably um, one of the worst time slots. So it's right before the end of everything. It comes right next to um, right after lunch and then first thing in the morning after all the parties. So appreciate you guys, you know, coming here and, uh, and, and listening to, uh, to what we have to talk about or what I have to talk about uh, about Cyprus. Um, so before I get started, though, uh, they asked me to do a slide about the speaker. I didn't really understand what that meant, so I, uh, I tried. Um, I've been Drupaling, um, or I first Drupaled, I'm not sure the right way to, to say it, since Drupal 4, uh, and this is my eighth DrupalCon. Uh, so I made this cool thing. Look at that. Little things, they pop up. So I worked like a good 30, 45 minutes on that. Um, hope everybody liked it. Uh, sometimes I just watch it, you know, to make myself smile. Um, so anyway, I, I was not planning, um, despite having been at eight DrupalCons, I was not planning to speak here. Um, what happened was Dan uh, from Sava Group, who's back in the corner, um, he actually submitted two talks. One was on PDFs and the other one was on Cypress and got uh, both talks were, uh, were accepted. So when they realized that he was giving both talks, they said, that's a problem. You cannot give two talks. So Dan asked me, and I graciously accepted. So I threw together this wonderful uh, presentation, which is going to start off with some slides, some general talk about testing, uh, and then move into the dangerous world of live demos. Um, so yeah, let's see. When, when, when I was preparing for our talk or this talk here, I was trying to think of like the best way to present it. You know, should I focus on uh, you know, specific use cases or just very general? And so I took a, a step back and I thought like, you know, Drupal's kind of in a very formative time right now uh, where you've got kind of the idea of decoupled. Um, you know, uh, that, that term I should say is, is floating around where you've got the front end separate from the back end. Um, and then you've also got, you know, another term that's floating around DevOps. And so the community is really embracing both and Cypress kind of plays into both of those. Um, so, you know, like I said, with the uh, decoupling, we're talking about developing the front end separate from the back end. Uh, this talk is actually on the, on the front end um, uh, track, I believe. Um, and so, you know, this would be building your, your back end in, in Drupal and your front end, right, using one of these shiny new JavaScript frameworks, React. Angular, Vue, um, and then on the other side, the other sort of main idea that I was thinking of was, was around DevOps. And so what I mean by that is uh, really automating the steps in the software development lifecycle, you know, with the goal of being more efficient and, and being faster. Um, so if we look at the software development lifecycle, right, it looks kind of like this. It probably isn't 100% accurate, but uh, you get the idea. You start on the left with research, you do a bunch of things, and then at the end of it, um, you land with uh, your deployment. And in today's world, that deployment is more often than not going to be automated. Um, and so, you know, this automation or, or sort of uh, push towards a, a more automated, you know, world with the needs to, you know, release code more frequently, oftentimes uh, multiple times per day, um, you know, really pushes everything to kind of move at that accelerated pace. Um, however, you know, if you're moving really fast, but you're deploying garbage, that's probably not a good thing. Um, so, you know, what, what do we do to ensure, you know, a high level of reliability before we um, deploy code? And that, that's this, this guy right here, testing. So testing is super, super important. Um, and given the title of this talk and given the fact that you guys are here, you probably all know the importance of testing, I would guess. Um, and as time goes on, I think we're learning that the traditional methods and ways that people have tested with, you know, very long sort of QA cycles, you know, isn't really helping us get to the right any faster. Um, so logically, we're trying to automate that testing um, process as well. So uh, I guess of the people that are here, like who is currently testing what they do uh, development wise? And this can be automated because that's cool. Or it can be manual. You know, you deploy. You figure you should check the production site to make sure nothing blew up. That's technically kind of a little bit of testing. It's maybe not in this order, but it's testing. Um, so can you do your hands again? Cool. And then how many are doing like automated testing? Awesome. Barely. Barely. That's a yes. It's a binary, you know. Um, but yeah, so, you know, um, I think the, uh, 
the idea of automated testing sounds so amazing. And I think everybody that didn't raise their hand or the one that's kind of, you know, halfway almost testing, you know, they might not be doing it for, for kind of several, several, several reasons, right? Um, and I think kind of it comes down to the existing tool set and the existing ways of doing automated testing. They, they feel broken um, in that, you know, our, the existing tool sets are slow, um, inefficient, difficult, and outdated, right? So even though they're automated, they still run fairly slowly. You've got to sometimes spin up entire, like, environments and instances to, to kind of drive these things. They're very difficult to uh, set up and configure. So you've got, you know, all these sort of very isolated, really neat tools that are really good at doing certain bits of automated testing. But to get them all running together in a way that's actually going to allow you to just write some tests and, you know, take care of that thing that was over there, the little testing triangle, um, you know, it's, it's difficult. And then what makes it even worse is that once you get all these, like, fragile pieces put together and you write some really cool tests, you often realize that they're flaky and they're inconsistent. You're, you're writing a test, it passes locally, you, you, you know, push it, and it fails in CI and you don't know why. It's the same test, it's the same everything, right? Why is it, why is it failing? Um, so, you know, I would argue um, that the reason this exists or this sort of problem exists is that the tools that are used for automated testing, you know, were built ages ago, right? Where you would do everything server side and then you'd get a DOM and you could look at it and say yes or no, this passes or fails, right? But, you know, the whole world of, you know, decoupled things, um, that doesn't work because so much is actually happening on the client side. You've got an API that's serving up some data and then you've got the client that's actually consuming it and, you know, doing uh, stuff and things um, with that. So I guess, you know, this sort of pain resonates with developers, not just in the Dribbble community, not just in, you know, a specific part of, you know, de the development world. It's every developer that's ever tried to write an automated test for the web, you know, they, they, they run into this. So, you know, we, we kind of at, at Cypress sent, set out to, to develop a tool that, that solves this. So you, you get up and running very quickly uh, with just being able to kind of download um, an app, uh, which is our, our, our test runner. Um, and you can download that directly or install it via, via NP NPM uh, if you're using one of those shiny new JavaScript frameworks. Um, and go through a streamlined onboarding process where within the first five minutes you're writing your first passing test. So you're not dealing with all those like fragile pieces that you're trying to put together and make sure that it actually, uh, you know, works. Um, you're just focusing on what you need to be focusing on and that's the, the writing of tests and, you know, running them um, consistently. And so, uh, the test runner uh, is it's free and open source, which is really neat. And then that's great and everything because you got this really cool GUI that you know we'll, we'll look at to really build these tests, interact with your web app. But then when you want to you know make it a part of your CI/CD pipeline, um, you add a couple of lines to a config file and 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 you're set to go. And that data then you know gets pushed to a, a dashboard where you can see you can gain insight into a, um, into your builds that are running in, in CI. Uh, so it's not just you do it locally, you push it, you see what happens, you come back to it. It's, it's, it's a, the feedback loop is, is a lot shorter. You iterate a lot faster. So that's kind of like what Cypress is, right? What, what, where we came from, why we're doing what we're doing. Um, so now I'm just gonna go right into a, uh, a demo because I think that that's probably a good, a good thing to do. Um, and then I'm going to do this out of order because I don't want to forget, and it was another thing I was supposed to do, but I've got a couple more slides about the contribution uh, sprints tomorrow and then the feedback slide, so I just want to make sure I show these so I can check that box, check both, both boxes. Um, but yeah, so we'll go, we'll go into the demo, and then hopefully I'll remember to come back to this. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, like I mentioned, getting started, super easy. You can go to uh, the Cypress website, install via NPM, or just download it now. Uh, once it's downloaded, um, when you open it up and add your project to it, you're actually going to get uh, this example spec file, which basically tests sort of a, 
a dummy app using every sort of command and API that Cypress has available. So you actually can kind of see, you know, what, um, uh, you know, how, how stuff is implemented. In addition to that, the docs are um, pretty phenomenal. There's a lot of, lot, of, lot of work that's gone into this that describes um, not just, you know, uh, the specific APIs and whatnot, but just also like how you would might want to, uh, you know, test and different sort of core concepts, guides, that sort of thing. So definitely, definitely check that out. Um, so yeah, if we look at, uh, like after you add the project, you're gonna get a Cypress folder here. And in this integration uh, folder, you see that example spec file, but we wanna just add a new file, just call it Drupal. Oops. Cool. So for the purpose of, you know, what we're going to be testing and everything, uh, I just set up a very vanilla Drupal 8 site. Um, so I'm, I, I decided not to tackle the whole decoupled thing because I didn't want to introduce more concepts of like front end, back end. I thought that it would be good just to start with very vanilla, like, you know, how we're dealing with the front end. Um, and then if you go in more detail into the docs and whatnot, you can see some of the advantages, and I'll try to point them out as we're going through this, of how this, uh, specifically, how certain uh, of our commands specifically sort of apply to, uh, you know, just the front end world and whatnot. So yeah, uh, basically, you know, we want it to say uh, the, the site should load, right? And to do that, we just use side visits. And just type the little URL, drupal.docs. Save it, go back to this. You see that it's recognized that you've got a new spec file in there. You click on it, it launches uh, your browser, and it starts running your test. And so there we go. We, we wrote our first uh, passing test, which is pretty neat. It loads. Um, so, well, thanks for coming. Um, <laughs> speedy. Um, so yeah, so it, the, the really neat thing about Cypress is that you've got the ability to not just see your app, right, but you can like interact with it and you've got like full access to your, your um, Chrome dev tools, right? And the other thing that's probably important to mention is that your app that's running here, um, it's, it's scaled, right? So you can see right now it's at 45%. Um, we've got, it's at, you know, that's like the, uh, the resolution that it's displaying at, um, but it, it shows you kind of what you would see there. So uh, I think one of the important things about being able to interact with it is like, you know, if you wanted to inspect an element, you, you, you've got like your normal sort of playground of like what you're used to working with when you're, you know, building front ends. Um, and then as I mentioned, like the, the resolution bit is, is pretty cool. So, you know, we're on what is, I don't, I don't know what resolution this is, but it's not very big, right? Um, but if we wanted to say uh, simulate like a different screen size or whatever, like my actual screen size, it's, a, it's like a MacBook, um, we could do, I think it's uh, sign out viewport and then MacBook 15. And so now it's just gonna rerun the test and you'll see that, you know, it's, uh, it's changed the resolution, it's scaled, it kind of looks, you know, similar, or not similar, but you know, you, you can still work with it. And then you can also give it sort of arbitrary amounts, so if you want to just be like tiny or something, do that, and there you go. And so again, you can, you know, fully, fully sort of uh, interact with it. So the other cool thing is like on the right-hand side of the screen, you see all the commands that are running. And it's great that that ran, super neat, but, but what's even neater is when you start interacting with it. So if you hover over it, it restores the DOM to the state at that time. You can click on it to pin it, and now I can interact with the DOM as it was when that uh, command was run. Um, the other neat thing is at the bottom here, you see uh, additional output about what, what the command actually did. So this one was pretty boring. It visited, there weren't any redirects, there weren't any cookies, it was very you know vanilla. But if you had a redirect or if you had some cookies being set, it would all kind of be in your face there so that it's not, you know, hidden, hidden away. Um, and then we've got, you know, again, just additional information, uh, 400, um, 800, that's just what it is. And then so I think there was, I was going to do this also where if you look at, you know, um, 
drupal.org, right? And it doesn't look good at 400 pixels wide. Just want to put that out there. Um, but who's that small anymore? So anyway, if you look at this, um, you also see information. Uh, so for example, like they have a redirect, right? So it says that, you know, I requested the uh, www.drupal.org and it redirected me to the HTTPS, so over SSL. So that's a cool bit of information. Um, and then also, this is one of those areas where it's really neat with your, when you're dealing with like a decoupled app situation is the amount of insight you get into um, XHR requests. So you're able to see you know, what was done, um, the method, the URL, the status that it returned, how long it took. I mean, all of this information, the request, the response, there's a ton of really good information that you can do um, to kind of iterate through you know, how you're dealing with the response that's coming back. Um, so I mean, this is all about you know, speeding up your uh, development, which is, which is super neat. Um, all right, so let's go back to our little test site. And I'm sure we want to do other things, um, like test the site kind of as like an anonymous user. So we'll just set like a context of anonymous function. And then we're going to throw this stuff up here. And as you start writing more tests, you, you start to notice that like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm doing this like visit a lot between tests. So there's probably a, a better way to do that, and there is. And so um, if you guys are familiar, like Cypress is built on some of the most common tools, which is why you know, the API feels very natural. Um, and you'll see when we start doing like assertions, it just it, it feels familiar because you've used tools that kind of are uh, the underlying engine to this. So we will do a uh, before each. And this is where we'll just do the visit. And so I actually, I set the base URL of our um, project in the cypress.json, um, which basically just uh, makes it, it tells the app where to start. Um, so with that in place, we can actually just tell it to just go, you know, to slash. And it will know that, you know, we're trying to do that. So that's going to save a lot of time. Um, it's going to look, you're going to be able to make your, your, uh, your tests a lot more readable. Um, so that's neat. Let's, uh, let's see. So there, site loads. It's got nothing in it. It's fine. Um, but let's, let's do something else. Let's actually do an assertion. So uh, we're going to say site has correct title, right? And this, again, will be a beautiful function. And what we want to do is we're going to use the sci.title command. Um, and so what this does is it returns, it yields um, the title. And so we'll, we can look at the command when we run it. Um, or actually, I guess we could do that right now. Uh, we can see that, you know, this was the command that was ran, and this is, this is what it yielded. So we want to make, we want to say, like, this should uh, include or contain whatever. The word will say welcome. So you run that, and I can't spell. So yeah, there we go. We've got two passing tests, huh? Isn't that great? I'm excited. Um, so uh, so yeah, that's that's super neat. But then you know you can start going into more than just looking at you know what you can interact or rather you know the the title that that's great you know. But what about like what an anonymous user might actually do? You know they they might do a search, right? So in order to do that search, um, you know they're gonna probably put something into this text box, right? So. How, how, how could we find this? Like we could, you know, inspect element and try to pick out, you know, oh my, we've got some choices. We can use the data selection, we can use the ID, the name, we can do all this. Or we've got this fancy thing that we call the selector playground. And so it kind of gives you that same sort of inspect element feel. But what happens is like when you click on it, it, it tells you the command that you would use to interact with that element. So we're just gonna copy that to the clipboard and, uh, oops, I guess I need to do this. So, can search function. So, if we, you know, run that. And again, like when you save a test, it automatically reruns it. I mean, you're talking about like just everything you can do to help people move faster, this does. Um, so, yeah, there we go. We've, we've now selected that, but, but we want to do something with it, right? Probably want to type something in it. So, we're going to use the type command, and we're going to search for. Um, a little page that I, I added here. So it's just hello world. Save that. It's gonna run. You're gonna see it types it. So like that's that's neat, right? But like what if 
you wanted it to go faster or even more fun, slower. Because <laughs> it's just too fast. You can do that. It actually slows down the typing. So you can modify the delay in typing. So like this is useful if you know you're doing some sort of you know XHR that's like querying for something and you need to control that time. There's a lot of things, a lot of commands around here that allow you to really uh, I mean, control time um, by setting the clock and doing really neat things. Um, we're not going to get into that because that's like a lot more technical, um, but, uh, but it's, it's, it's a possibility. So, okay, there we go. We got that. Um, so after you type it in, you want to maybe click this or, you know, you can type enter or whatever. I like to type enter just because it's easy. I'm also going to set the delay to zero because it's speedy testing with Cypress. It's not slow testing with Cypress. So you can do, um, you can just type it in like enter, right? And it recognizes that as, you know, something that you're doing. So boom, there we go. It searched for, you know, hello world. It, it found it. It looks excited. Good for it. Um, and that's cool, but that doesn't really help us. We probably need like an assertion here. So uh, let's do, let's see, let's see, let's use the selector playground again. There we go. So search results, that makes it easy. So I get search results and we're going to say should contain hello world save and there we go it did it so again you can click into every command that it, that it runs um, and you can see all that it's doing it's getting uh, this element it's typing into it it's submitting a form um, console is going to show you data around that form submission it's going to tell you that the page loaded. It's also going to tell you that the URL changed because you might want to do something about that. You want, might want to know about that. Uh, and then last but not least, um, you know, we are getting the search results and asserting that the results, um, the result that we expected is there. So that's super neat. Uh, another, you know, something that you might want to do is um, uh, like can search, but get like no results, right? Because that's a, that's a decent use case. Um, <laughs> Function. Oh, look at this. What's going on here? There we go. All right. And so here we're going to essentially do the same same thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat. Just copy this. Um, actually, I'm gonna do this instead. Hello world. And then we're gonna do the side I get. And um, I don't think we've we've actually done a click yet. So let's let's actually click on the um, on the support or not the support the uh, um, search button. So uh, you can see, I said I said this is speedy testing, but like if you you know have to wait one and a half seconds, that's that's kind of not that's not speedy enough. So we're gonna speed it up a little bit more by doing an only on that test. And so now you know we just we just saved. 50% of the time there, which is pretty neat. Um, so it drives you right to that, that particular test and shows you, so it shows you what's going on. So we're going to use a selector to find that button. It's the edit submit. And this one means that it matched one element. So there are certain cases where you might have elements that are going to match the same selector, whether it's the ID or a class or whatever it is. And this allows you to gain some insight to it. And there's actually uh, some additional context that gets provided in the command uh, doohickey on the left-hand side here. Um, when you do, when it does match multiple, uh, multiple selectors. Um, I don't think we're going to, hopefully we don't experience that. So yeah, we're going to get that wonderful thing. And then we're going to click on it. So essentially doing kind of the, the same thing, right? Uh, but it's clicking. The click command is very versatile, right? It knows if what you're trying to click on is not visible. Uh, you can tell it to click in certain areas, like within that element. So, like, um, has anybody ever experienced something where, like, you have to like be in a specific spot and click on it, otherwise it doesn't recognize your click? This is one way you can kind of test for for that. Um, all right. So, what are we doing? We're doing no results, right? So then we're gonna take this no results, and then we are going to let's just run that. And as I mentioned, like one of the things was like the URL changing. And so uh, when I was talking about this uh, presentation with Dan, he was like, you know, why don't you show like a web form, you know, kind of going through a process and having it, 
you know, bounce you to a different place depending on what you put into it. I was like, that's a great idea. Sounds like a lot of work. Um, so I kind of like, you know, I'm going to meet you in the middle here, Dan, and um, I'm going to just show off the awesomeness of what is Psi URL. Um, so it is a command that essentially gets your URL. And so here, if we do that, we can click on it, see what it gives us, right? And we know that it should say that, right? So you can do like should contain this. All right, so there. We know that you know somebody searched, it took them to the right URL, that's, that's super fancy. Um, and then obviously we, we probably do want to uh, you know, make sure that you know, search results, or rather that um, the way I, I did it before was just uh, showing, I guess, how you can use the body. So I get, and this is like the sloppiest way to do it. I do not recommend doing this. Um, but basically you get the entire body, right? And then you look in there, and you're saying, I think something should contain your search. Search yielded, always a fun word. No results, period. Period's very important. Um, so there we go. We've got another, another passing test. So um, that's kind of, you know, very basic interacting with a, uh, you know, with a site, non-authenticated. But let's, let's, you know, talk about maybe an authenticated user and, and kind of what that would look like. Um, so we're going to go down here, do another context of authenticated function. Doo -doo. And we're going to say it login. And here we're just going to cheat. Do side visit user. Get rid of my only. They're sneaky. And I'm going to add the only here so we can speed things up a little bit. OK. So the, another important thing to, to mention, and you guys might already know this depending on what kind of testing tools you're using, but you know we have uh, the before each is only going to be kind of applied there. So we're kind of, you know, uh, fresh slate here. And so we can use the selector uh, doohickey again, selector playground. I'm sure they don't appreciate me calling it a doohickey. I spent a lot of time working on that. I apologize, Chris. Um, so we're going to type admin. And then, you know, the same thing goes where you can like actually, like, like I mentioned, you can do enter, you can do tab, you can do backspace, you can do all those kind of things. But I'm just going to use the playground again, and, uh, or the doohickey, whichever. And we're going to type into that. And the password, anybody want to guess? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. It's close. It's close. So uh, if we do that, all right, that's cool. And then we're going to go and we're going to do the enter because that's always fun. So we save it, runs it, logs in. You'll notice one of the slowest parts here is Drupal just thinking about, like, do I want to let you log in? Um, and it said yes. So here we are. But maybe we want to want to know a little bit more about, um, you know, or confirm, assert that we've logged in and the content is what we expect it to be. So here we're just going to, you know, we've got an H1 tag that's got admin in it. So let's go ahead and do one of our favorite assertions. Git H, not high, <laughs> it's funny, um, should contain admin. Save that, run it, and whew. There we are. We are now logged in. And every time you run this test, it logs in. Um, so if, if you can probably uh, imagine, you know, if you're running a bunch of tests um, as an authenticated user, you, you, you don't actually, I should say, when you're running tests as uh, an authenticated, any kind of user, you don't want to persist state between these tests because that's like, that's like garbage that you're dragging along. That's like a skeleton in the closet that might jump out and attack you at some point. So um, Cypress resets the, the state uh, whenever you, you know, run, run each test. Um, there are ways to, uh, I guess, interact directly with uh, cookies. Um, to interact directly with like local storage. So you can kind of you know, speed that stuff up a little bit. Um, but one of the things, I kind of got a little sidetracked there, but what I was trying to, where I'm going with this is um, 
you know, on the, uh, the login side of things, what we want to do is log in before every test, but instead of, you know, having our, uh, this like four lines, it's a lot of lines, or really I guess it's only three lines, three lines of code in, in every test, we can actually write um, a, a custom command. And so this is a way that you can extend Cypress to really do everything that you need it to do, um, that you might need it to do frequently, and again, to keep your, your, your tests and your spec files uh, super clean. So we're just gonna do Cypress, commands, um, and quick question, who, any TypeScript fans in the room? Got one. All right, the world will catch up to you, I promise. Um, so if you are not a TypeScript fan, you should be, because it's really cool. Um, but there are typings for Cypress. So if you're using like VS Code or any um, you know, uh, IDE that supports that, uh, you get a lot of like context around everything that you're typing. So it'll basically say like, okay, you just type git, this is how you use it. You wanna read the docs, here's a link to the docs. It's kind of information overload, but sometimes it's awesome because again, you're not having to bounce between applications to get stuff done. Um, all right, so we're gonna add a command. We're gonna get really creative and call this login. Um, it's gonna be a function because that's what it is. And we're gonna drop our stuff in here, right? Um, so I can save that and actually instead of having all this stuff, we're just gonna now do sci.login. So if we come over here, we can see that it, it ran. It ran really fast, I gotta start it over again. Isn't that super neat? I thought that was super neat. Um, maybe it's just me. Um, so, so here, you know, you've got the ability to, uh, you know, run, do, do a lot, really. Like, you can not just create your own commands. You can create uh, child commands. Um, you can override existing commands. So if you don't like the way that we're implementing something, by all means, go ahead. You know, do it, some, do it a different way. Um, and like I mentioned, uh, Cypress is open source. So if it's not just some l really particular thing that you know you're kind of weird about anyway, and it's something that the rest of the community would enjoy, pull requests are always welcome. Um, so yeah, that was, I guess, you know, what I wanted to, to show you guys in the demo. Um, outside of uh, the demo, I wanted to kind of give you some, you know, next steps, like if you're interested in, in getting involved with um, the Cypress community or just testing, you know, your app. Um, like I mentioned, the website's super neat. Um, I mentioned the docs. Um, support is really cool. So we are uh, super active in Gitter. Anybody here uh, active in any sort of Gitter channels? Nope, it's really cool. Uh, so. <laughs> It's, uh, you will be, trust me. So look at this, look at all these words. So many words, yeah. Uh, so if, you know, if you're getting started and you need you know, help getting started, this is probably a really great place to start for, um, actually no, start in the docs, right? But uh, if you need that sort of human interaction, um, Gitter's gonna be a great place to do it. So Valerie, she's actually an intern, so she's here just uh, pointing someone to an issue that already exists, awkward. Um, and then Stack Overflow, also another really cool place. So, uh, you know, Cypress entered a, its public beta back in October. Um, and, like, I mean, it's kind of amazing the amount of uh, people that have started to adopt it. Um, you know, definitely, you know, follow Cypress on, on Twitter. Uh, you know, check it out, all that good stuff. And then I wanted to show you kind of the docs and the, the API. Um, so, like I mentioned, that kitchen sink uh, sort of uh, example spec that gets pre-populated into your project. It is, it shows you everything, but then more detail you've got here with, um, with really every command. And I mean, it's like, it's a lot, a lot of words. So like sci.visit, right, seems so simple, but we've got a lot of words talking about how it is simple, but also how it can be extended. So you can override timeouts. Um, which is again something that I really didn't get into, but like one of the one of the reasons that your um, more sort of uh, traditional tools that are built on top of you know Selenium or, or WebDriver, the things that they struggle with are you know seeing what's going on within your application. So uh, Selenium, it is basically outside of the browser, and it uh, you know sends a command, flashes a light, sees what's going on, you know tells you, okay, cool, yes, no. Um, Cypress like is architected completely differently, so it's it's not built on Selenium. It's built like from the ground up, and uh, runs within the browser. And because of that, it knows everything your app has done, everything your app will do, and can intelligently um, not be flaky. So it knows that hey, there's an XHR that hasn't come back yet. I should probably wait on it. 
And then it sits there and waits until the timeout, right, which can be adjusted. But that gives you two things. It gives you one less flake, but then it also gives you um, faster tests. So if you look at a lot of Selenium code or WebDriver code, you're going to see a lot of waits. Somebody's like, oh, let me do this request, and then I'm going to wait five seconds because it might take five seconds. Um, but if it's coming back in like you know 500 milliseconds, then you're wasting four and a half seconds. And that doesn't sound like a lot until you start thinking about how many times you're going to run that test, not just locally, but in continuous integration everywhere, right? So um, that's a, a huge benefit. So again, sort of sidetracked. But you've got wonderful docs here. Um, we've got in the examples uh, different recipes for the ways that people are attacking um, certain sort of use cases. Uh, single sign-on is another really unique one because uh, the way that that works, I mean, we basically use what's called side out request to send a request directly to that endpoint with the cred credentials it needs, receives it back, does all like the tokenization fanciness and allows you to kind of get around um, having to actually interact with, with a form, which again is another way to, uh, to sort of speed things up. Um, stubbing, again, if you've got like a back end, um, we've, we have some, some uh, users that actually uh, build their front end without having a back end and can use the uh, how they've you know mocked out the back end as essentially you know uh, spec for the people that are developing the back end so super neat super cool um, let's see we've got uh, best practices tutorial videos very neat so if you're really you know wanting to sink your teeth in uh, definitely check out the videos um, it's, uh, you know, it, it kind of walks you through everything, which is super cool. Uh, and then we've got our um, media stuff, which is, which is all there. So you can see what other like, people have sh uh, written or spoken about um, Cyprus, which is pretty cool. And then we've got our roadmap. So you know, some of the most commonly requested features are on our roadmap. Um, so if anybody noticed, and if you didn't, I'm going to point it out. Um, you know, when you are running Cypress, it actually, it's, it's launching Chrome, right? Uh, so, you know, what, what other browsers do you support? And right now, uh, you know, we are supporting all your fla flavors of Chrome. So Chrome, Chromium, um, Canary, uh, even Electron. And uh, Firefox will be dropping shortly, followed by Safari and then Edge. And then, you know, we'll have a, a thought about IE. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, we just did. Uh, so... What's basically going to happen is when you have more browsers that are available, they're going to be available to see via this, uh, this dropdown. Um, and then, you know, super neat. One thing I didn't touch on, which I really need to, is probably the, uh, the dashboard. So this is like when you're running it in CI, like being able to, uh, to kind of see what's going on. So I'm going, to, I'm going to actually cheat and go back here, delete this project ID. It's going to yell at me because there's a comma. Try it again. Try it again. What I do wrong now? I don't know what I did. Anywho, it likes me now, so we're good. So uh, basically, whenever you get started with a project, there's a runs tab. Um, it's going to say you have no recorded runs because it hasn't recorded any runs. You click set up. You give it a name, Drupal. Who's going to own it? Me. It's going to be public. Set up a project. And it gives you this command. So this is essentially, you know, if you're getting started in CI and stuff, uh, we've got a whole guide on that. Again, lots of really good words. Um, and then it shows you kind of essentially what the command that's going to run. So if you guys are using like Circle, for example, um, let's see if I can find it. But you can see it's, it's super simple. You're essentially installing Cypress and you're running it. So if I did that, for example, here, um, Ben. So this is essentially like we're pretending like I'm CI, but I'm not. We're just pretending. Um, so it's going to go and it's going to give you this beautiful warning, um, which apparently is bugging Electron, so uh, there's an open issue. Uh, it's going to run all your tests. Um, it's going to give you this nice little, you know, should log in. Oh, because we have that only in there, right? Um, but it'll show you the number of tests that ran, the ones that uh, passed, the ones that failed. Uh, it records a video, super neat. It's going to upload those assets. And then when you come back to this runs tab, you see that, bam, here we ran this three seconds ago. Um, 
you know, High Sierra, very, I'm sure that's common in the CI world. Uh, click on it, and it takes you to the dashboard, which I guess you need to log into. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. So yeah, there we go, we got Drupal. And you can go into the run, you can see kind of that same console output, which you know if you're running it in headless CI, you typically don't have access to or whatever. If you had failures, they'd be here. You watch a video of the whole run. Um, you know, if you've got some free time, just browse through the uh, passing runs. I don't know why you do that. Um, and then I did right back here the doc group. I was playing around with it earlier, just to kind of show like the different states. So here you've got like a failure. Um, when you click on it, you see kind of the, the stack trace of, of what that failure was. Um, and I think this is because there was one additional test that I, I didn't actually do in the talk um, where I basically added something to a menu. I checked a checkbox and adjusted the order and that kind of thing. Um, so it shows you the, the stack trace. It shows you the error. It didn't check it because it's not visible. So again, we talked about how it's intelligent. It knows what it can and cannot do as an actual like, you know, uh, user of, of the site. And then it gives you the video. Um, one of the neat things about the videos that you're going to have in the dashboard is that they, they use keyframes to know exactly when things happen. So like if you've got a 60 minute build and you've got a failure at like 45 minutes and 33 seconds, it's going to jump you right to that point when you hit play on this. And you see it like started here, just to show you kind of that failure. Um, and it can, again, help you kind of pinpoint that. Also, it's going to take a screenshot. You can take arbitrary screenshots if you want, just for funsies. Um, if you go to like, you know, we did an only here. So after you sort that, you can do like screenshot. And we'll call it logged in. Save that. And then if we ran that test in Cypress, um, it's actually just going to, let's see here. It's going to tell you that it took a screenshot. And then if we look back in the file system, we'll see screenshots logged in. And this is where it was. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to cover. I guess not. Um, yeah. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to remember to come back to this and remind you guys about the contribution sprints. Very important. Tomorrow, community needs you. Um, and then um, surveys. I, you know, if this is about me, hopefully you guys are going to say good things. Because I'd say good things about you, best audience ever, except the people that left. Um, <laughs> So yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, I do have uh, a couple of, actually several shirts and stickers if anybody wants. You're more than welcome to come up and grab them. Uh, Nikki from Sava Group was kind enough to fold and organize. They, they came in a big like circle, like a bundle, and she made them not that. So we got small, medium, large, extra large, very good stuff. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much. Any uh, questions? Okay. Yeah, you want to come up to the mic? I think they want to hear you. They, for archival purposes. Uh, is there a way to examine the headers of what's coming back? Is there a way? Yes, you can. You have complete control over everything. Um, that's so. Cypress sits as a uh, proxy in in between everything, um, and by doing that, it gives you the ability to have complete okay. control. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Yep. Is that your question too, the second hand? No. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Come get shirts. Oh, question. How does, uh, how does Cypress handle vid visual regression testing? Visual or regression testing. How, me... how might you solve for it? Yep. It's a tool, so it could Absolutely. Integrate. So let's see. Let me go back to this bad boy. Do, do, do. We've got roadmap. <laughs> so um, there are there are a lot of there are a lot of ways that people um, are kind of combining tools to get it done. Um, so if you like, you know, go on our uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. Screenshot diffing. So here's like the issue 495, very yep. popular one. Yep. Um, but there are uh, some folks that have put together some libraries to kind of make it easy. Um, it's not quite perfect, but it will be a feature of the dashboard. So actually taking two images and laying them over each other and telling what well, the difference is, yeah. like that, that's not the hard part, right? The hard part is honestly managing, well, the hard part is one, making sure that that screenshot is being taken at the exact same time, you know, that the cursor isn't blinking. 
Um, so that's kind of the hard part. And the really hard part is managing. Right. Things change. You're yep. making updates to your, your UI. How do you say, hey, this is actually intentional. Exactly. It's a huge regression. And so that whole like interface is, is really the hard part to say like, you know, these are your masters and this didn't, you know, match your master, what needs to happen. So um, it's in the roadmap, it's coming. There are some tools to kind of get you kind of halfway there until yeah. they're ready. You know the XKCD on competing standards? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what we're trying to avoid is like throwing another tool at it and be like, oh, it doesn't quite do this and then go to the next one. Exactly. But so that's cool. one of the things that we, that we believe with like Cypress is that the, um, you know, by just doing the baseline testing stuff so well that like everything is just incrementally going to add on that, right? Mm -hmm. So on, on the roadmap, you know, we've got uh, spec load balancing. So that's actually about to drop here in a couple of weeks. Um, that's like spec parallelization as well as third party integrations. So mm -hmm. like this is something that you're kind of getting for free. You've invested all of this, like the really expensive part of testing is investing the time in actually developing the test, right? right. So you've, de you've um, invested all of this time in actually developing uh, you know, these tests, like we're giving you all of these things for free. So like if your tests take, you know, an hour to run, the parallelization will help, um, you know, orchestrate that uh, with your CI and, you know, run them efficiently. But the same thing goes for like screenshot diffing, um, the analytics side of things, mm -hmm. just it's something that you're going to inherit um, by having used the, you know, the test runner. Very cool. Thanks. Thank you. T-shirts. Uh oh. This is extra large and this is small over there.